Today is June 14, Flag Day. Ideally, this flag is a symbol of who we are as a nation and our hopes and dreams for all people, all our citizens. Our nation is a beautiful tapestry of the world's cultures. With some of us being here before white settlers and explorers, with many generations being brought here to be enslaved, with others coming in hopes of a better life, and with some coming as they escape oppression and war. To gain or to be denied our nation's freedoms or rights simply because of the color of my skin does not honor this flag. For me to remain silent when men and women, boys and girls, continue to live in fear and oppression because of the color of their skin does not honor this flag. We must come together as people of faith and as a nation to wash away the inequalities that continue to separate us. Let us enter into a time of worship in humility and hope.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we are here this morning to praise and worship you and celebrate who you are and whose we are. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power from us. For you created all things, and we are existed to glorify you. We are not afraid of our future, for we know you are with us. We are not discouraged, for we know who holds our future. Many of us walk through the difficult time in their lives, but they will not be afraid, for they know where their help comes from. Remind us of your promise that you will strengthen us and help us. You will hold us up with your victorious right hand. Caring God, you ask us not to worry about anything but to pray for everything. Be with those whom we name in our hearts before you and those in our congregational care. We lift up Sue Smart, who had a knee surgery last week, and those who had knee and shoulder surgeries in recent weeks. Send your healing power and healing touch wherever they are today. Continue to show your grace and healing to those who have been hospitalized due to coronavirus and other illnesses, especially Dennis Perdi and Charlie and Sherry Treat and Melba Talbot as they are fighting against coronavirus in their lives at this moment. Continue to show your strength and healing in their lives. For those who are going through treatments and surgeries this week, give them your courage and strength so that they can trust you in their journey. And those whose health are failing badly, encourage their weary hearts and bring you hope in their lives. We also ask your comfort and peace to those who lost their loved ones during these uncertain times and continue to pour out your hope in their lives so in the midst of their despair and discouragement they will have eternal hope in their hearts. Father, we are ready to reopen our church this coming Sunday and we are ready for uh, people uh, who are coming in to worship with us. But Lord, we are not perfect, so in the midst of our uh, reopening this journey, we want you to continue to show your grace and mercy in our lives. So even though there are some mistakes, we hope and pray that people understand what we are going through and show their grace and mercy in our lives. Father, continue to pour out your wisdom and guidance to our staff and our pastors as we are dealing with these uncertain times. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done in our church. And we pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, beginning with verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus has gathered the 12 disciples and he has preached, taught what we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. They have seen him heal the lepers. They have watched him as he spoke with the centurion and the daughter was raised from her deathbed. They watched as a woman touched the hem of his cloak and he acknowledged her faith as it healed her. He has healed the blind and cast out demons, and with that little bit of training, he is now telling the disciples to go and do what they have seen him do, to proclaim the good news, to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, and to do that only to the lost people of Israel to the other Jews, because the harvest is plentiful. For generations, God has tilled the soil of the people of Israel, helping them to see who he is as their God, but more importantly, who they are as the chosen people. The disciples had to be a little bit intimidated with what Jesus was wanting them to do. This is not to be confused with the Great Commission that occurs after Jesus' resurrection. This is very different. It is the disciples going out to help with the harvest, to be able to adopt a posture of being sent. It's the first time that they are sent. And we, as people of faith, are sent also. Sometimes we allow the possibility of failure to keep us from wanting to go and be sent. But what we must remember is that the harvest is there. God has already tilled the soil. Right now we're in a time that is anxious not only for our church and our community, but also in many ways for our country as we face Not only the continuing isolation of the pandemic, but the reality of our racial injustice. But we as people of faith are to go out and to plant seeds of hope. It's who we are. I always think about this time of year when the big garden that we would have started thinking about in February... And Daddy would pull out the seed catalogs and pour over what would go where, and he would draw the diagram, and then the seed packets would come in, and we would plant the seeds. We would weed the garden, 
and those first tomatoes would come and we'd get to make tomato sandwiches simply because Daddy had planted seeds and we had helped. It's what we are called to do now as people of faith, now especially as people of faith, to plant seeds of hope in ground that God has tilled, but we have allowed to go fallow. So think about that, what it means to plant seeds, to be about God's work, not necessarily being able to do it all, but to just plant a seed here and there. First thing you do is you remember that God has no crop failures, and he has already tilled the land. But before your feet hit the ground, when you get up in the morning, ask God to allow you to see those places where you could plant seeds. And then as you go about your day, look for those places where you can truly see someone who needs to hear that hope that God plants. If you're standing in the line at Lowe's, and somebody pulls weed killer out of their cart, even from six feet away and behind a mask, you could say, you've got a lot of work there, it looks like. It's an open question, a statement of invitation for them then to be able to say to you something, and then for you to offer a word of hope to them. If a checker in a line looks down, and a lot of folks these days do, you could actually say you look like you're having a hard day. Whether they answer or not, that's up to them. But you could offer a word of hope. If someone behind you only has a couple of items and you have a full cart, you could let them go ahead of you. And then you could say, have a blessed day. If anyone looks at you like you have two heads, a lot of people looked at Jesus the same way. If we, as people of faith, don't live in hope, we can't help with the harvest. It doesn't have to be anything big. But if we don't plant the seeds, there will be no harvest. If people don't want the seed, that's on them. But if we don't scatter them, that's on us. All you have to do is carry a seed packet in your pocket. A little packet of hopeful scriptures that will give you hope as you go into a store, as you go into the community. It's past time for us to treat one another the way that God has treated us. Martin Luther King Jr., one of my favorite quotes from him is, only in the darkness can you see the sky, see the stars. I wish it didn't have to get as dark as it has gotten to where we can be reminded how we need to treat one another, but more importantly, as people of faith, how we need to treat one another because we have received so much. The harvest is plentiful. God has tilled the soil. Let us be about his work in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the people of God say, Amen.
and now may the God of the harvest give you courage that you might plant seeds of hope to a hurting world. Amen. Thank you.